Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome to Coast View, the show that continues to celebrate the men and women who are making Coastal Mississippi a special place to live, work, and play. Uh, today, we continue our Friday special with Jeff Duncan, a, a writer and a columnist for The Athletic. He's covered the Saints more than anyone else on earth. Come on in and join me, uh, Jeff. And let me say good morning to you first. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great, Ricky. Great to be back. Great uh, to, to be talking Saints after a win, finally. Yeah. Well, a couple of losses. So it's uh, sunshine and roses over here. Well, I told, you, I told you last week, I hope that we're, we're coming back this week to talk about a win and we get to talk about a win. But let's do this real quick. Um, there's more pressing uh, concerns uh, in front of us. We're taping this on, on Thursday morning. But we are, you know, it, w based on what we know about Hurricane uh, Delta now, is that the steering currents are pretty clear that it's going to go into central to western Louisiana, and uh, the, the steering currents are pretty much set. Could go 50 miles one way or the other. You know, we're still expecting some impact here in coastal Mississippi. Rain, uh, a little bit above normal wind, could have some tropical storm force winds and some of the thunderstorms that we're going to get. Um, we're going to, you know, we're going to have higher than normal tides, but given the situation, I, I should say tides, I should really point out that we're under a storm surge warning, three to five feet. It could be, depends on where the, where the, uh, uh eye goes in and it obviously depends on the size of the storm. So people in low lying areas know this drill have to pay close attention. But the good news for us, Jeff, is that's cruising the coast in spite of the fact that it may be a little wet cruising the coast continues. And uh, we're able to continue to have that economic uh, shot in the arm that the cruise in the coast brings coastal Mississippi. It's a really important event. Um, so anyway, but you know, how are you doing personally? So you live, you live in the city. What, let's, before we get to the Saints and what they're doing to prepare for Delta, talk about your situation. Well, you know, it's funny. I just was talking to my neighbor this morning uh, about uh, maybe taking our cars and putting it in a local uh, covered parking lot here. I, I live near Children's Hospital and they open it up. They're very nice corporate partners, uh, allowing us to park uh, people from the neighborhood in their, uh, in their covered garage. So I think we're gonna do that just to shield our cars from you know, any type of wind and, and heavy rain or potentially hail. Uh, but I, I feel that we're gonna dodge the worst impact of this storm. Unfortunately, it's gonna go west of us and and our friends and neighbors over in the Lake Charles area, which I think you and I talked about before. I, I went and uh, visited Lake Charles a, a few weeks ago for a story on McNeese State's football program and the impact that they felt from Hurricane Laura. And uh, I just can't believe that they're gonna get another storm coming in there. Uh, that that uh, city, that area, Cameron Parish, Calcasieu Parish, uh, they got hammered by Hurricane Laura. I don't think the national media is really covered it as well as, uh, you know, maybe some of the other storms that have hit Louisiana. Uh, so it's unfortunate that it's going west. But for us here in New Orleans, I don't think we're going to feel the real impact of the storm as much as our neighbors to the west. Yeah. And what's uh, what's unique about this storm? Let's let's talk about that for a second, because you did see that and you did a great job of describing it. And and you actually mentioned that you you you, you it was hard to find a roof that didn't have a blue tarp on it. Uh, every roof in town has suffered some degree of damage. Ricky, the thing that was staggering to me was seeing these massive evergreen trees snapped in half like toothpicks and, and you know, all across the entire area. Uh, I talked to Frank Wilson, who's the head coach at McNeese State, the football program, who used to be at LSU. He's a tremendous coach from the New Orleans area. He was familiar with the devastation here with Katrina. He's from the West Bank. And Frank, just uh, his entire house had been uh, hit, uh, you know, uh, trees knocked over his neighborhood, of course, was uh, it reminded me so much of Katrina, uh, piles and piles of storm debris, uh, because so many roofs have been damaged and the water leaking in, of course. Uh, so it, it's a bad, bad situation over there for them to be dealing with another storm, just the mental, uh, you know, yeah. anguish that it takes to deal with the preparation. Uh, getting your families taken care of, the well-being of your neighbors. Uh, it's just unfortunate that they're having to deal with this again. But uh, that's just the, the the kind of part and parcel of living in the Gulf Coast right now, right? I mean, we deal with these storms, uh, you know, almost on a monthly basis. 
and I feel like the people are resilient here and used to it and certainly know what to do in a time of crisis. Well, in the case of uh, Laura, it came in and it had it had pretty high storm surge, but mostly confined to a certain area um, just to the west, excuse me, just to the east of uh, of um, of uh, St. 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 Charles, right? Lake Charles, excuse me. Lake Charles, yeah, yeah. Correct. And uh, but this one actually is coming in a little bit further to the west. Right. So not only is it going to affect people who just had to deal with the incredible devastation of Laura, but then it's going to actually increase the number, of, the amount of damage a little bit further to the to the east. And um, man, I said to, to the west, but I meant to the east of of that area. And uh, and the other thing is that this was a category four storm at one time and has been it's, it's you know traversing the entire Gulf of Mexico and it's gaining size. So the storm surge, again, we're gonna feel some of that storm surge over here in coastal Mississippi, but the storm surge story of this storm will be probably greater than what we experienced with, with Hurricane Laura. Yeah, so what happened, of course, we all remember that National Hurricane Center report for Laura where it said there could be unsurvivable storm surge. Uh, that, that's a pretty heavy word, right? And when when the storm surge did not materialize toward the, what, what the forecast expected, I think a lot of people, especially in the national media, uh, felt like Lake Charles and, and those parishes, Cameron Parish, Calcasieu Parish, people there dodged a bullet, as, as, as it were. But the, the wind damage was, uh, you know, severe. It was devastating. It was one of the most powerful wind storms that's ever hit the uh, you know the state of Louisiana or or the United States one of the top five most powerful wind storms we've ever had and you can see that when you go into Lake Charles that Ricky the number of of power trucks there utility trucks I've never seen anything like it there were hundreds of them everywhere trying to get power restored it was two weeks after the storm and there were still large swaths large neighborhoods that didn't have power for two weeks. And, and anyone that's been through a storm understands just how devastating that is when you're having to run on generator power and, and get gas and fuel. Yeah, it's hard to find gas stations are open. That's what those people were dealing with for weeks. And now we got another storm heading that way. It's just uh, really unfortunate. It's uh, very, very unfortunate. And um, I, I read a report just this week. The goal of the power companies is to get power to anyone who can get it, who can receive it. You know, sometimes... There's too much damage to actually receive it, but they had just basically completed that project, <laughs> and, I know. And, and here, here we go again. So we should keep those people in our thoughts and prayers for sure. And uh, you know, New Orleans, uh, you know, they they dodge the the direct impact, but you can always have one of those rain bands set up on top of New Orleans, and New Orleans is in this bowl, and you don't have, even though they've upgraded the pump system in New Orleans significantly since Hurricane Katrina. You know, they're still having these issues of pumps going down and all of this. So, you know, uh, you know a, a really heavy rain could create serious problems for New Orleans. Yeah, the infrastructure is just so old, you know, decades old, and, and, and it just had a lot of problems keeping it maintained and, and the ability to pump out the water. You know, we're below sea level here. We have 17 pumping stations. Uh, and a heavy rain for a, an intense period, a short period of time can cause major major street flooding. And, and that's the concern the Saints have had. I, you know, I reported this week about the New Orleans Saints uh, obviously having discussions with the NFL and trying to have a contingency plan in place, a ready plan to get out of town and evacuate in case Hurricane Delta did impact the New Orleans area. So they were prepared to evacuate today after practice today to Indianapolis. Uh, that's kind of become a home away from home from the New Orleans Saints. They're, they've evacuated there before. Uh, ahead of storms uh, in 2008, 2004, I know they were up there, 2012. Uh, they were familiar with the infrastructure in downtown Indianapolis. So it was going to be the, the place for them to go. The Indianapolis Colts were out of town this uh, coming weekend for a game. So they actually had discussions with the NFL about potentially moving the Saints game scheduled for Monday night against the Chargers in the Superdome, moving it up to Indianapolis to play at Lucas Oil Field. That was on the table. And it was going to be uh, the ready plan if they had to uh, enforce an evacuation. But uh, fortunately for the New Orleans area and the Saints, they're not going to have to leave. They decided last night after a team meeting that because the storm is going to move so far west of us, 
that they're going to try and ride out, ride it out here. And what their concern is, Ricky, is one of those heavy bands coming through, like you mentioned, uh, while they're having practice to, uh, tomorrow and it knocking out the power, say, in the in the Kenner area where, where, or the Metairie area, area where their facility is, and them inter interrupting practice or interrupting their game plan preparations uh, for their game on Monday night. What was interesting, you know, I lived in the warehouse district when I was over there, and uh, I was amazed at how small a storm it took to knock power out in New Orleans. You know, New Orleans does not have a reliable power grid. No, you're right. And so the Saints have generators all over their facility for their indoor facility. to So they would be able to probably to conduct practice on generator power. The problem is when they use those generators for the indoor facility, they don't have them in their facility uh, for their meeting rooms. So they have to kind of transfer the power around. It creates a lot of logistical issues. This is Jeff Duncan from The Athletic. He's covered the Saints more than anyone else on earth. A great friend to Coast View. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation and we'll really get into the game last week. They finally won. We'll see you after this break. Broadcasting safe and sound from the coastal Mississippi studios, this is Coast View, View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk 103.1. Super Talk 103.1. What decisions are being made by state lawmakers and how will they affect you, your family, and community? If you listen, if you listen, you'll know. Super Talk Mississippi, the Super Talk app, and at supertalk.fl. Hi, I'm Billy Kinder, host of Big Billy Kinder Outdoors. Here, the show Saturdays at 1, right here on Super Talk Mississippi. Turkeys, whitetail, Grenada Lake crappie, or Gulfport redfish. We enjoy it all, especially when you're in camp with us on Super Talk Mississippi. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So do your part and stay home. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household. But phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit social gatherings. If you need essential items like food and medicine, try using a delivery service. If you must leave your house for essential items or if you want to take a walk for exercise, make sure to wear a cloth face covering. Stay at least six feet away from other people. Try not to touch frequently touched surfaces like light signals, street signs, or benches. And wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds as often as possible. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. It takes all of us to slow the spread of the coronavirus. So stay home unless absolutely necessary. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. Thousands of Bulldog fans have subscribed to the Thunder and Lightning podcast. Have you? On each episode, Brian Haydad and Joel Coleman give you an inside look at your Mississippi State Bulldogs. The Thunder and Lightning podcast is free and available on demand at supertalk.fm and on your smartphone. Just search for Thunder and Lightning on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thunder and Lightning from Supertalk Mississippi, covering the Bulldogs like no one else. Hey, want to come work for the number one radio group on the coast? Kella South Media has a great opportunity for an outside sales consultant. Get paid while having fun and work in the exciting, fast-paced world of radio. We have award-winning stations like 97.9 CPR Rocks, 105.9 The Monkey, G96.7, Super Talk 103.1, and 103.5 The Possum. Take the first step towards a new and rewarding career. Submit your resume to jesse at telesouth.com. That's J-E-S-S-E at telesouth.com. Telesouth Media is an equal employment opportunity employer. Talking to the people that help make the coast such a unique place to live. This is Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. We have Jeff Duncan from The Athletic with us today. He's a, he's a columnist and writer, covered the Saints more than anyone else on earth. And uh, a really good friend to the show. It was a terrific conversation at the, be at the beginning of the show, Jeff, because 
I think it's important while we may be counting our breath, uh, our blessings to, that we didn't get a direct hit uh, from uh, from Hurricane Delta. We must keep our thoughts and prayers around the people <clears throat> in central to western Louisiana because they're really going to need it. And I mentioned to you there there are several people and groups and nonprofits and whatever from coastal Mississippi that headed over to help after Hurricane Laura. And, uh, you know, my sense is they're probably gearing up again to go right back over there again. So, you know, thank you for sort of providing that color. You don't think about the saints. You don't think about how does this impact them. And, you know, ha- if, they, if they did have to go to Indianapolis for that, which they did not have to, but if they had to, or with pandemic and all of this, that, the COVID protocols, that would have made things so complicated. Yeah, you know what, and Ricky and, and Sean Payton talked to us about this after the, the Lions game. It's one of the things I really respect about him the most, not only as a head coach, but as a leader. Uh, he refused to use that as an excuse. It, it's, I think it's one of his strengths as a head coach. I think he learned this philosophy from Bill Parcells that you can't allow your players, your coaches, your staff to have a built-in excuse, he said, because that – will ultimately undermine your performance and allow you to subconsciously have a built-in reason for losing. And so they didn't use that as an excuse. Yes, they had six starters out in that game. Yes, they had a COVID scare where one player tested positive. Uh, They learned of this as they arrived in Detroit on Saturday night. A lot of players and coaches through the contact tracing, uh, you know, methods that they use through the NFL protocols, they ended up having to test late into the night that night, make sure that they weren't also infected. Uh, some of the players didn't sleep at all, but Sean Payton refused to use that as an excuse. The team played, I think, arguably their best game of the year. And I think that mental toughness, that tough love that he instilled in his team, not allowing them to say, oh, to feel sorry for themselves, uh, I think carried the day. And it's, it's, I think it's something that, we should all think about in our own lives. It's easy to do right now. Living is tough during this pandemic, but sometimes you just have to have the fortitude to not allow it to get to the best of you. Well, we're going to, we're going to shift gears and move into that. But before we do it, I just want to ask you, um, we talked about just book the last, uh, the last show last Friday, Peyton and breeze, the men who built the greatest offense in NFL history by Jeff Duncan, our friend here with us today and the forward by Steve Gleason. I actually shared a, a portion of the uh, of the uh, Steve Gleason uh, forward in the book on the show last week. It's a really it's a really special book. It captures the the. I mean, what's interesting? You said this, but as I continue to read it, one of the things, and you you sort of sort of alluded to this now in terms of the the mindset of a breeze. Excuse me, of Coach Payton as he relates to uh, COVID and not using that as an excuse. But this book is a book about life. It's a book about success. It's a book book about focus and burning the midnight oil and working really hard to achieve success, that there are no easy roads to pure success. You have to be willing to, in in a conversation with Pete Vacari from Vacari Auctions yesterday, he said, you know what, there may be people smarter than me, but there aren't going to people, there aren't people who are going to outwork me. That's what this book is about, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's about the process. It leads to success on the field uh, from, from Monday to Sunday. The amount of time, energy, resources invested by John Payton, Drew Brees, the New Orleans Saints is what leads to their success on the playing field. There's no shortcut to that. John yeah. Payton talks about that. Joe Lombardi had a great quote, the offensive, uh, I'm sorry, the quarterback's coach for the Saints. He said, you know, there's an axiom in coaching, uh, keep it simple. Uh, you know, he said that that's worked for a lot of teams. He said, we don't do that here. <laughs> There's nothing simple about what the New Orleans Saints do. Their game planning, and I'm sure you're going to get into this when you read the book, uh, on how much time they put into a given game plan to prepare for a game. It's, it's astounding. It's extraordinary to be able to mentally process all that information and get prepared, the attention to detail of every play going over. I mean, Ricky, sometimes they'll take one play and it'll take an hour for them to go through all the options on that one play to get ready for the game because they know Drew Brees wants an answer. Everything the defense can give them on that given play, they'll take an hour and break that 
one play down. That's the attention to detail it takes. That's that's really incredible. I, you uh, the books available on Amazon and all the popular you know online book um, buying sites. That's going to be available in bookstores soon. How, what's the early sales telling you? Yeah, very encouraging right now. Very uh, you know flattered to see the early sales. Uh, talking to the folks at the publishing house at Tri Triumph Books up in Chicago. Uh, it's been it's been very encouraging, and I'll, you can get the book right now, Ricky. If you order it online at Triumph Books or at Amazon, it'll show up on your on your doorstep the next day, or however long it takes to get shipped out, and it'll be in stores uh, next week, October thirteenth. It's available. It'll be at all your local booksellers. Okay, so let's go to the game. Um, what was interesting about the game right out the bat is <laughs> it went down fourteen to nothing <laughs> almost immediately, and. I mean, you can't help but think, what in the world is going on? I mean, what in the world? Of course, they turned that around rapidly. It was incredible to see the number of unanswered points. Um, they dealt with the injury. The uh, number of injuries in that game were unbelievable. So let's start to break it all down. Let's, let's just talk in generally about what you observed in the game, and then we'll kind of come back to the bits and pieces of it. Well, I think the Saints felt really positive about their ability to move the ball on the Detroit defense. That 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 bore out once they got through that. I mean, that tip ball on Drew's first pass was just unfortunate. Those are the breaks of the game. It gets deflected right into a defensive back's arms, and they end up cashing in for another quick touchdown. They're down 14 nothing five minutes into the game, uh, but. They didn't have to deal with fans in Detroit, so that helped a little bit. There wasn't this crazy, raucous environment. Uh, Detroit converted a number of third and longs on that opening drive. I think they had a third and nine, a third and ten, a third and seven. That's been an Achilles heel for this defense. It showed up again early, and it's something they've got to get under control, Ricky, because every time that defense allows a third down conversion, it keeps the great offense the Saints have off the field. It's one of the things I think that was overlooked by fans and media in that Vikings game last year. Everybody focused on the offense and the fact they only scored in the low 20s. Well, they only had about 50 plays in that game. They were off. They weren't on the field enough to generate offense. You've got to get Mike Thomas and those playmakers on the field. And when the defense can't get off the field on third down, it allows time of possession to be in favor of the opponent. That's what's hurting this offense a little bit this year. We saw once they turned that around this game and you get the offense, the ball back, five straight touchdown drives, 35 straight points, and they dominated the game. It's so, so interesting to understand the reality of that. I remember that game last year. So frustrating. You just say, gosh, please make a stop. Let's, let's, let's give us an opportunity to win. Um, so let's, why don't we start with that, Jeff? What, what is on the defense? What is the cause for letting, um, you know, third down conversions occur? Well, I think there's two things overall that are hurting the team. The secondary right now is struggling with some communication issues. Uh, teams are putting them in positions uh, using bunch formations, and you've seen that probably a lot. The opponent has two or three receivers next to each other in the formation, and they break and and go a number of different ways. That requires a lot of communication for a Saints defense, which plays a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. They have, to, and that's what how opponents will attack man-to-man -man coverage, is they will use a lot of crisscrossing routes quickly at the line of scrimmage, cause confusion, cause coverage breakdowns. That's being very effective against the Saints right now. They've got to communicate better. They've got to know their assignments better. These are basic things, Ricky, that shouldn't be uh, really happening to the Saints defense with as many veteran incumbent players as they have. Uh, and the other thing that's hurting them, we all know this, it's been well documented, are the pass interference penalties. Those are automatic first downs. Right now the Saints have 11 defensive pass interference penalties, uh, by far the most in the league, and that's contributed to the opponent getting 18 first downs out of penalties on the defense. That's also by far the most in the league. So they've got to cut back on the penalties. A lot of those are just technique, fundamental errors. Uh, that the defensive staff has got to get under control with these players. Why aren't we getting more pressure on the quarterback? Well, they played some guys to get the ball out quick. Uh, you know, Cam Jordan is being double teamed, and they've got to get more production. That's why we've seen Trey Hendrickson. He has stepped up. He's leading the team right now in quarterback hits, leading the team in sacks with three. Uh, but they miss Marcus Davenport over there. It looks like he's going to be back this week. At least that's what I'm hearing. And I think that'll help a lot. 
you know, having another dominant pass rusher. Trey Hendrickson's a very good player, and it'll be interesting to see how they handle that situation if they bring Marcus Davenport right back into the starting lineup or they use a rotation there because Trey Hendrickson's playing so well. This is our friend Jeff Duncan from The Athletic. He's a reporter. He's a columnist. Uh, he's a, you know, he's he's got a PhD in the Saints. But uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about the Saints offense. Well, we learned that We've actually got a really good running game, and Kamara wants the ball more. <laughs> he says, make them stop us. The other thing is, Drew Brees can throw the pass more than three yards. We learned that in this past week, so we'll, <laughs> we're going to talk about that. Just said that was the case. We certainly learned that. We'll be back after this break. Coast View on Super Talk 103.1 is brought to you by Allen Toyota on I-10 Exit 38 Gulfport. See all of the incredible inventory at allentoyota.com. And remember, when you think Toyota, think Allen Toyota. The stay-at-home orders, the new state flag, the mask mandates, the protests and riots in many of our nation's cities, the battle for the White House. So far, 2020 has been a year like no other, and only one radio station has covered it all from a Mississippi point of view. Super Talk Mississippi. And hang on, because who knows what 2020 will bring us next. Whatever it is, Super Talk will be right here to deliver it to you live. Listen in all 82 counties statewide. Super Talk Mississippi. Be sure to go by this station's website and check out the half-off deals. Audubon Zoo tickets for just $15. That's half price. $30 zoo tickets for just $15. Again, go to this station's website or Facebook. Look for the half-off deals logo to purchase yours now. Heart attacks and strokes don't stay home. So don't avoid the ER out of anxiety. Don't die of doubt. If you have an emergency, call 911. When seconds count, the hospital is the safest place to be. Hey, I'm Steve Azar, and you never know who or what you'll hear when I spend a Mississippi minute with my friends. Talking yeah. to Paul Thorne, Mississippi, true treasure, uh, really incredible recording artist, singer, songwriter. has been doing it a long time, doing it the right way. It's almost like a Forrest Gump thing because I, mean, I was a boxer, slash, I worked in a furniture factory, slash, I had a gig two nights a week playing my acoustic guitar in a pizza restaurant, slash, I was in the National Guard, <laughs> and, wow. uh, you know, all this stuff was going on at the same time. Slash, I had a writing contract with Rick Hall and Fame. In a Mississippi Minute. Be sure to check out In a Mississippi Minute with me, Steve Azar, right here on Super Talk Mississippi, the Super Talk Mississippi app, and now available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. There's a place to share gossip about the office party fun and a place to share the story you tell everyone. There's a place to share a laugh about when things went wrong and a place to share the video of you dancing to your song. There's a place to share spare change, lunch, and your time. But we could all be better at sharing how we're feeling inside. 76% of employees have struggled with at least one issue that affected their mental health. When you share, you're not alone. Feeling down? Here's your prescription for a daily dose of good news and positive vibes. Good Things with Rebecca Turner. Every afternoon, Rebecca highlights all the good things happening right here in the state you call home. Daily exposure to good things with Rebecca Turner may cause smiling, feelings of positivity, happiness, and even laughter. When you experience these symptoms, tell your friends to listen. Okay. Weekdays starting at 2 p.m. here on Super Talk Mississippi and now on Amazon Alexa devices. This is House Call for Health. There may be no greater medical mystery than no greater tragedy than sudden infant death syndrome. It used to be known as crib death. For no apparent reason, a presumably healthy sleeping baby dies. Medical experts don't have clear-cut answers to what causes sudden infant death or SIDS, but now they have two risk factors, smoking and drinking during pregnancy beyond the first three months. A new study finds that babies whose mothers drank alcohol and smoked tobacco after 
after the first trimester are at far greater risk of SIDS, 12 times greater. Previous studies showed a risk of smoking and drinking individually. This study says doing both drastically increases the danger. The research is sponsored by the National Institutes of Health, which is calling for greater publicity about the danger and improved screening at the very beginning of a pregnancy. For more health news, go to foxnewshealth.com. House Call for Health. I'm Lisa Brady, Fox News. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So do your part and stay home. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household. But phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit social gatherings. If you need essential items like food and medicine, try using a delivery service. If you must leave your house for essential items or if you want to take a walk for exercise, make sure to wear a cloth face covering. Stay at least six feet away from other people. Try not to touch frequently touched surfaces like light signals, street signs, or benches. And wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds as often as possible. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. It takes all of us to slow the spread of the coronavirus. So stay home unless absolutely necessary. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. Whether you're a rebel, a bulldog, a golden eagle, or just a sports fan, Super Talk Mississippi has got a podcast for you. For you. Sports Talk Mississippi, The Rebel Report, Thunder and Lightning, The Super Talk Eagle Hour, and The Borky Show are all now available for you. And it's all free. Free. Get them all on demand at supertalk.fm and on your smartphone. Just search for Super Talk on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. He's the former president and publisher of the Sun Herald, and now he's on the radio. Welcome to Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. We're counting our blessings here in coastal Mississippi this morning. And uh, while we're going to have impact, um, you know, it could have been so much worse. Let's pray for our friends and our neighbors over in Louisiana. And speaking of Louisiana, we have Jeff Duncan. Uh, he's uh, joining us from New Orleans. He covers the New Orleans Saints. As I said, he's got a PhD in the New Orleans Saints. <laughs> hey, before we before we continue with the offense, I want to tell you something. I went to, I had Steve Azar, singer-songwriter uh, Steve Azar, and I co-hosted the JT show for Super Talk, statewide show. Uh, Super Talk Network involves 12 stations that are in every corner of the state, all 82 counties. So it's an amazing network, very powerful network. And we were at, the, at Town Green in Biloxi or cruising the coast, and it just it was just awesome. This is actually my first time to do a live remote, and I've done two, but the first one was to celebrate the opening of the Mississippi Aquarium, which wasn't open to the public to the next day. So this is actually my first time in public, literally, since I've been doing this show. And, uh, man, the number of people that came by and, and wanted to talk, to, mentioned your, your, you know, visiting with you, one guy, I remember, I remember him so well. He was a volunteer fireman from the West Harrison County Fire Department, uh, older gentleman. And he said, man, really, I listen to your show every single day. And he looks at me and goes, man, you look a lot younger than I expected you to be. <laughs> I guess I was supposed to be an old soul. I don't know. But Love it. it was really cool to see people coming up. You know, of course, visiting with Steve, I mean, he's, a, he's a, a kind of a famous Mississippian. Um, and then, uh, you know, talking to me and, you know, lots of old friends, but the show Coast View, you know, we've touched a lot of people and it's really cool to actually s sense that I see it on social media a lot, but I haven't felt it myself yet. Right. And people are enjoying, uh, this Friday show. And I'm really thrilled to have you on a regular basis, Joe. I, I can't thank you enough. The folks that tell us out are thrilled about it. And um, I hope that, you know, making Jeff Duncan sort of a household name in coastal Mississippi, not only uh, not only is, is important to them, I, I hope that they enjoy listening to your evaluation of the Saints, but also it helps your book sales. Your book yeah. is amazing. Hey, what a Ricky, great I, I can't thank you enough for having me on. I, I love it. I, I love, you know, my love for this whole region. You know, I, I was born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky. I've been in New Orleans and Louisiana now for 20 years. And and the Gulf Coast reason, I've just, I've just fallen in love with the Southern Mississippi and Southern Louisiana, the 
the quality of life here, the people you meet, the culture. I love everything about it. So uh, I'm I'm thrilled to be a part of this. Well, we're we're glad to have you here. I told Tish Williams, who's the executive director of the Hancock County Chamber, that you're looking for a place over there. And she was very happy. But Hancock County, you know, we can talk about that another day. But you know, we've already discussed this to some extent, but they really got their act together. And I, that that conversation with Tish William this week was just an amazing story of a county that's hitting on a lot of cylinders. So anyway, let's shift gears. Buddy, that first pass that Drew Brees threw downfield, I can't, was it 16 yards? I can't remember the number, the exact number. But man, it was beautiful. So he can throw further than three yards. Yeah, as a matter of fact, next time I see him, I'm going to tell him that Ricky Matthews said he couldn't throw the ball. Down the field. <laughs> well, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> or somebody was doubting it. You know what I think people That's did? Not- is that I really think, and by the way, I ran into Drew in Audubon Park yesterday on my run. He was out coaching his son's flag football team and had a visit with him for a little while out there. And I can tell you this, Ricky, he's as into coaching his flag football team as he is quarterback in the New Orleans Saints. The guy's wired that way. Yeah. Uh, he, he had a he had a binder out there, was going through plays. It was amazing. But Drew, I think we all saw for the first time this season, the the Drew Brees we all know, right? I mean, this was the first time where he looked like Drew Brees. Ball was coming out quick. He was decisive. He looked confident in the pocket. And I think they had a really good game plan. And I think also something you mentioned off air really played into this, and that is the running game got going. They they had success running the ball with Latavius Murray and Alvin Kamara, and that sets up everything else in their offense. They're able to play action pass, and that opens up windows downfield for Drew Brees, and, and the all, offense was firing on all cylinders. And I think people just made a very understandable presumption, and that is they watched the games and didn't see the ball going down the field, and they said, you know what, maybe he can't throw it down the field anymore at age 41, and that's a totally different take than saying he's electing to not throw the ball down the field. He can do it. He's choosing not to. And I think that's what he was doing in these first few games. The way defenses were playing him, the fact that he didn't have the true confidence with his receivers to get open down the field, all those things factored in to him electing to throw the ball short. And we saw once they played a team like Detroit, there's a lot of man-to-man and they could get guys open downfield. It opened up things. Well, I mean, what's the, you know, there's there's so many bits and pieces to this, and I'll let you let you talk about this, but uh, just to sort of kind of kick it off, you said that Traquan Smith was going to become a player, that the team was high on him, and you and you can literally you, what we're watching is the emergence of sort of a great communication connection between him and Drew Brees. You're seeing Drew Brees begin to have more confidence in him, but but man, he made some really damn good catches at that game. Yeah, and they've been extremely high on him. He's had some injury problems through his career, but we've seen when he's healthy, uh, he's had some monster games, Ricky. I think he had a 181-yard receiving game uh, a couple of years ago. He had a 150-yard receiving game against the Eagles. So he's proven that he can do it at a very high level. You know, he was a great basketball player in high school, and you see him, he's a tremendous rebounder. I was actually talking to some of his, uh, you know, uh, friends and colleagues from back in his days in high school down in Florida. And they talked about he wanted to be a basketball player. He was a great rebounder, but he wasn't quite tall enough. He's 6'2". And you can see him now in football, use those skills, go up and get the ball. He's not afraid to make a contested catch. Uh, He makes a lot of tough catches for this team. And now that Mike Thomas looks like he might be back, I think now we're also seeing Emmanuel Sanders, that trust and confidence that Drew Brees has with him start to blossom. Uh, they're really going to be formidable, I think, with those three receivers complemented by Jerry Cook when he comes back. He's got a little bit of a groin injury right now. I'm not sure he's going to be back soon. Uh, but the, the offense is starting to come together with the running game and these these alternate receivers uh, between Traquan Smith and Emmanuel Sanders uh, that we can see this offense start to flourish. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you get everybody back and get healthy. And... <laughs> Of those three receivers that you just talked about, a running game that's hitting on a lot of cylinders right now. Uh, Drew Brees, you know, regaining sort of some confidence around these new players or whatever. It's going to really pose a challenge for defenses to decide who they're going to who they're going to double team. Because I mean, that was the plan to begin with, right? To create a quandary around that. Yeah, and I tell you, don't don't sleep on Adam Troutman, this young tight end they have from Dayton. He's a young guy. I think he's going to have a big game on Monday night if Jerry Cook, especially if he can't go, which I don't think he will be able to play. I think uh, 
Uh, Troutman's a guy that they're very high on. He's going to end up being the tight end down the road. He'll be the heir apparent. What we're seeing with him, I think, is going to be very similar to what we saw with Jimmy Graham when he came in. And they already had Jeremy Shockey. You remember Graham's rookie year. He was Mm -hmm. a third-round draft pick. He didn't really contribute a whole lot that year because they had Jeremy Shockey. And then the next year, Jimmy Graham became a Pro Bowl player. The same type of uh, trajectory I I envision for Adam Troutman. And and while Jared Cook is sidelined, I think his role is going to grow. And I think they can attack the Chargers uh, at the tight end position because the last week, if you watched the Bucs game against the Chargers, uh, they they had a lot of success throwing to the tight end uh, on the Chargers. So look for him on Monday night to have a, a big role, and that will also open up things for the receivers and running backs. Well, you mentioned uh, you mentioned Troutman last week, and um, and then I remember even back when we first started talking about the season, uh, the team, you know, coming out of training camp, going into training camp, they they see a very special talent in that kid, and uh, you're beginning to sort of see that now, and. You know, it's almost like we're watching the pieces start to fall into place. You know, it's interesting to watch. Hey, so um, what's the latest on the injuries on the offensive line? Well, I actually heard good news last night uh, on a couple fronts. One, Ryan Ramchek, who suffered a concussion. If you watch that again, he took a helmet right to his chin and got up under his under his face mask, and uh, he went down and was out the rest of the game. Because the game is on Monday night this week, that gives them an extra day for him to maybe get through the concussion protocol. And I think he's got a chance to play Monday night, which would be big for this team because he's. So there no, was no, no big lingering effects of that. It was so far. It looks positive for him. Let's yeah. just that way. We'll find out once he tries to practice today for the first time on Thursday. Uh, but also Andres Pete, who left the game a week ago, did not play last week against the lions. He had a, like a foot injury, an ankle injury it was carted off. It looked bad. I've heard encouraging reports on him. I don't know if he's going to be back this week or not, but it's he's ahead of schedule to come back. Uh, but they have some depth along the interior line. I thought Nick Easton and Cesar Ruiz both played very well uh, in Pete's absence. Matter of fact, Sean Payton mentioned that. Eric McCoy had a dominant game at center. So the offensive line, I think, has a little bit of depth. What you lose not having Pete out uh, with, with Pete out is his flexibility to swing out the tackle. So what we saw when... Ryan Ramchuk went down, Ricky. They had to use Ethan Greenidge in there, who's a very uh, uh, you know, inexperienced player. And one other thing I'll mention before we go to another break, James Hurst is back. He's been on a four-game suspension. They signed him. He was a former player that started for the Baltimore Ravens. He is going to be their backup tackle. He has experience as a starter in this league. He was out for suspension the first four games. He's off that four-game suspension now by the league. He'll be available this week. So if Ryan Ramchick can't go, I bet first ends up getting the call. This is Jeff Duncan from The Athletic. We're talking Saints on the Saints Friday. We'll see you after this break. Broadcasting safe and sound from the coastal Mississippi studios. This is Coast View View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk 103.1. Super Talk. Nobody keeps Mississippi informed like we do. With 12 stations covering all 82 counties. If it happens in your state, we're on top of it. The news, the weather, the sports, and the talk that's important to you. The issues that matter to you, your family, and your bank account. It's all right here. And when you're away from home, depend on the Super Talk app and supertalk.fm to stay in the know. We're proud to serve our fellow Mississippians. Super Talk Mississippi. We know that we're asking Americans to do a lot right now. So we're asking everyone to be selfless for others so that we can protect those who are most susceptible to this virus. A question I often get asked is why should young people care about the spread of coronavirus? Well, we know that people with underlying medical conditions over the age of 60 are at highest risk, but they've got to get it from somebody. Social distancing is really physical separation of people. It's what we refer to when we ask people to stay at least six feet apart. Not going to bars, not going to restaurants, not going to theaters where there are a lot of people. It all just means physical separation so that you have a space between you and others who might actually be infected or infect you. 
We all have a role to play in preventing person-to-person -person spread of this disease, which can be deadly for vulnerable groups. For more information on how you can social distance, please go to coronavirus.gov. Hey, I'm Steve Azar, and you never know who or what you'll hear when I spend a Mississippi minute with my friends. We are with the fabulous Norbert Putnam as he played on so many hit records, you can't count them, and produced for some of the biggest acts ever. Uh, Norbert, Elvis. And I want to tell you about Presley. He had two different voices. He would sit and talk to me in a very calm, low voice. And we were at Stacks one night, and we were having lunch. We always had lunch at midnight because he was nocturnal. We sat there, and we have our sandwiches, and at 1 o'clock, he looked up. He said, hey, Pot, come on, it's time for me to go be up. And he stood up in a much deeper voice. He put on his macho voice. Hey, fellas, uh, it's 1 o'clock. <laughs> Let's get cracking, okay? In a Mississippi Minute. Be sure to check out In a Mississippi Minute with me, Steve Azar, right here on Super Talk Mississippi, Amazon Alexa, and now on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. It's me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. Everyone knows the only thing better than pizza is free pizza. And right now, buy a $10 gift certificate to CeCe's Pizza for only $5. It's like buying a pizza and getting a pizza for free. Go to our station's website or Facebook. Look for the Half Off Deals logo to purchase this amazing deal right now. We give HPV vaccine to children at 11 or 12 years of age. I have four children, two boys and two girls, and I've given the vaccine to all of them. Super Talk 103.1. Talking to the people that help make the coast such a unique place to live. This is Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. We're, we're here uh, having a great conversation with our friend Jeff Duncan. And uh, got knocked a little something out of the way here. There we go. Um, but uh, Jeff's covered the Saints more than anyone else on earth. He works for the Athletic. And one of the things we were talking about off offline, which I thought was so interesting, I wanted to know if Andreas Pete was as big as he seemed. And you said, yeah, he's you know, a little bigger. Finish the story. Well, I was just saying that the biggest player on the team by far is Marcus Hunt, the defensive end. He's from Estonia. I remember sitting at practice with Bobby Abair, and Bobby Abair went into this great. Uh, you know, diatribe about barbaric nations and how people come out of these barbaric nations like Estonia and they look like Marcus Hunt. He's six foot eight. He's one of the all-time leaders, Ricky, in the history of the NFL in blocked field goals and kicks because of his height. Uh, he's a massive human being and he dwarfs everyone else out there. Wow, that's incredible. Okay, so Alan Kamara and Murray, they're, they're playing lights out right now. And Alvin Kamara said this week, make them stop us. He means they, it, doesn't he? Yeah, look, they they had they were going to have success against Detroit on the ground. The Green Bay Packers ran for over 200 yards against them. They're one of the worst run defenses in the league, so the Saints were smart to attack them there. I don't know if they're going to have as much success running this week against the Chargers just because they have a better front seven than Detroit, uh, but they're going to have to continue to have success on the ground as it sets up the play-action passing game. It also, I think, helps them control the clock, keeps their defense off the field, and protects Drew Brees. So I expect to see more of the same this week. So they, Murray and Kamara really complement each other, don't they? I mean, yeah. you know, Murray's this tall guy. You don't expect him to be inside the tackle as good as he is. Yeah, he kind of reminds me of Deuce McAllister the way he runs. Kind of that tall, lean, kind of lean body. 
uh, and build, but he's a powerful runner. He made some big plays last week, ran over a couple of guys, plowed into the end zone on a couple of plays. Uh, I like how they're using Kamara now because he's had such a strong start. They're using him as a decoy. You remember how they used Rick, uh, Reggie Bush early in his career on those jet sweeps, putting him in motion, and that draws the eyes of the defense because Kamara is such a, a focal point for the defense. And then they pound Murray right up the middle after one of those jet sweep uh, play action uh, fakes. Uh, very creative work by the Saints in the running game. We, we often think about getting creative in the passing game. They're very creative in the running game. So you think Murray is underrated? Very much so. A guy that's very much respected in the building by the coaching staff and by his teammates. And the Saints got him very cheaply in free agency. If you remember, they he became basically the Mark Ingram replacement when Ingram went to the Ravens. He compliments, like you said, Alvin Kamara's incredible uh, you know, play on the perimeter. He's a tremendous runner outside the tackles, and they use Murray to pound up inside. And he's a better receiver than I thought. And he also is very good at protecting the passer. That's a key uh, focus, focal point of the Saints offense. They're running backs have to be able to pass block, and he's one of the best at that. Los Angeles Chargers, hard to say that. Um, Los Angeles Chargers Monday night. What, what's, what, what should be, will you be worried about? Well, I want fans to watch their rookie quarterback, Justin Herbert. Uh, he's out of Oregon, first-round draft pick. He's been basically inserted in the starting lineup because of Tyrod Taylor had an unfortunate uh, injury. Uh, and Herbert has responded very well. They've lost all the games he's been in, but they've been in. They almost beat the Kansas City Chiefs uh, in, the, in week two with Justin Herbert, a quarterback. He's got a cannon arm. I mean, a cannon. If you get a chance to go back and watch the, the replay of the Bucks game against the Chargers last week, he threw a ball, Ricky, 62 yards on a line uh, oh. downfield for a touchdown pass. Tyron Johnson, actually a New Orleans native who scored. Uh, they've got a lot of injuries as well. And they're missing some of their key players on defense in the secondary. Chris Harris and uh, Derwin James, a Pro Bowl uh, a cornerback. And I think it's going to really set up well for Drew in the passing game to attack them downfield. Tom Brady threw for five touchdown passes last week because they're so banged up in the secondary. They're using guys right off the street. And I think the Saints will have success attacking them there as well. So what you're saying is if our um, secondary doesn't get their act together, it could be a shootout. Well, what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to hold their coverage longer, maybe a, a, a beat longer than normal, because he's a good athlete, too. Herbert can move around in the pocket by time. We mentioned the Saints. They've had, they've had good periods of pass rush pressure, and then they've had periods where they've kind of disappeared, and they can't afford to give up those big chunk plays downfield or those killer pass interference penalties where they get isolated one-on-one -on -one coverage, and he just throws it up. They're going to have to have discipline. And what, what Dennis Allen says, get your eyes turned around to the quarterback so you're looking back at the ball and find and locate the receiver and avoid those uh, those yellow flags that have killed this team so far. So we talked about uh, Jared Cook. We talked about um, Davenport. You kind of gave us a feel for the offensive line and sort of what was the good news potentially there. Um, any other key injuries we should be aware of? Well, yeah, the big one, Mike Thomas, who I think is going to come back this week. Uh, we'll see how he gets through the next couple of weeks of practice, a couple of days of practice. Uh, they felt they needed to be cautious with him last week. They don't want that injury to linger. So they held him out this week, uh, last week, I should say. But I think he's going to get back on the field this week. He's been dying to get back. And that's a big time playmaker that changes everything in the passing game when he's on the field. Like I said, you feel the pieces coming together. Maybe we have a really good season this year. I think we will. So. Hopefully next week when we talk Jeff Duncan from The Athletic, we'll have uh, another winning um, game to talk about. I think they got a chance to go on a little bit of a run here, Ricky. If the schedule gets manageable after this game, I think you get the Carolina Panthers. Uh, you know, you got some games you can win, and I think they got a chance to go on a little bit of a winning streak now. This has been Jeff Duncan from The Athletic, talking Saints. Have a great weekend.